John, how are you feeling? Yeah, really good. Yeah, um, came back in a couple of weeks ago and been in full training. Um, had a good break, <laughs> long break. Um, and um, yeah, I'm excited to you know really push on now through this pre-season, get myself ready to go at the start of the season. Is that the plan, trying to get back just, just for, the, for the first game? Yeah, look, I was near enough. I was training against the, I was in the Tesco team end of the season last year, you know, so um, I was, um, I'm in a good place then, so it's been good to come back and um, just you know, slot into the training and everything's real fine and um, yeah, that's that's the plan anyway. What's it been like the last eight months? <laughs> yeah, um, long, um, frustrating, um, but what you've got to try and do is use that time to, you know, as a positive um, in your training and you know, away from the game as well, you know, it's it's been quite good. The you know the union and the Scarlets weren't rushing me, so I was able to take my time, make sure everything came back right, and um, yeah, enjoyed myself as well at times. Yeah. In terms of the injury, I mean, how bad was it to come back from? And obviously, you, you were you were in cast for a while. You, you like the leg was off. Was it was it tough? Yeah, it was initially. Um, it was the first injury that was completely non-weight bearing for six weeks. Um, so yeah, that was hopping around the place. Um, I want to, you know, thank, thank my uncle for lending me his mobility scooter. That helped. Um, um, but yeah, look, it was difficult, and it was probably the worst injury I've had. Um, but um, no, it, it, it feels good now, and I'm, um, you know, I feel back to 100%. Sorry, John, what did you actually do? So you never got. To <laughs> so basically, um, I broke. Um, two metatarsals and torn the Liz Frank ligament in your foot. Um, so it was like a foot dislocation. Um, so I had a, a plate and a few five screws put in. So uh, how did it actually happen in that game? I haven't watched it back because right. um, I knew it hurt, so I didn't really see it again. Um, <laughs> you know, it was, yeah, I, yeah, I could tell by my face I was in a bit of a pain. Um, so it was, I think it was just the foot collapsed. It was right. in a position where it just. I, I think so. Um, yeah, it was um, it wasn't ideal, and when it go when the clock turns red next time, I'll be booting the ball into touch. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the way it is. But then, then you must have known, you know, this is a serious one. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I did my knee again as well. Um, so when the physios ran on, because I got my I bent back over it a bit, so the physio came on. You know, what's wrong? I was like foot and knee, so I was more worried about my knee initially, and then the knee was fine, and then my foot then was. Um, yeah, in agony. Is that, is that the reality of rugby as well? I mean, obviously, this time last year you were lying sort of man of the series in the draw, and a few months later playing for Wales, you were out for eight months. Is that sort of the reality of you know the sport as well now, did not uh, Yeah, well, look, it, it it's the worst side of rugby, the injuries um, and the way the, the bodies get battered these days, essentially. But um, you know, it's it's how you deal with them, and um, unfortunately, the more you get used to rugby, being injured is have been more injuries in the past so I think once I knew um, I was going to be out for a period of time I wasn't I was disappointed but I was able to handle that disappointment a lot better and you know I remember when I told my ACL on at 18 you know I did at that time you think the world's going to end but you know I think you after being injured more and more you get used to having to work hard be on your own a bit and you have to be selfish in your rehab and everything like that then See someone like Sam finished last week at 29, so he's had quite a few injuries, you know. Yeah. Or maybe him and the injuries as well, but all the word on Sam as well. Yeah, look, it's you know um, a shame to see him uh, having to retire. Um, I played a lot of rugby with him. Uh, he's been my captain since under 20s, and you know he's. Um, I've played a lot of good, good games, big games with him, and. Um, it is very sad to see him leave, and um, you know I wish him all the success in whatever he chooses to do in the future. And yeah, and hopefully he doesn't slag off the boys too much when he's on TV. <laughs> I'm sure. Are you back now, these other fit than ever? Would you say you've had a lot of time to? You know? I think you won't know that until the first game. To be honest, you never know. You like to think so, um, but look, I, I've been able to uh, get my body in good shape, um, rest up, and you know I'm I'm excited. Uh, I feel. Um, I was ready to go, um, you know. So it, that's always a good sign in my eyes because um, it, it was such a long season. The season before, you know, your, your time off just went so quick. Where this time round, at the end of the season, the six weeks I had, 
you know, I was like by the end ready to come back to training. So um, yeah, I'm excited for the new the, the challenges that lie ahead. What have you got left to do in your career, John? What do you look at? Well, first of all, you get back on the field. Um, um, I'd love to. I'd love to win the big European competition. Uh, played in the final a couple of years ago, and um, you know, I couldn't think um, anything well, anything better at club level to do that. Um, you know, just just to be part of big games. You you love playing front in you know in the principality. You love playing like watching when La Rochelle played here. I was so, that was probably one of the hardest moments because like I've never seen the place like that. You know, the Parker Scarlet was rocking, and you know it was uh, that was hard to watch. And you want to be a part of that. So whenever there's a big game, you want to be the t- best players, test yourself against the best players. And um, for me personally, I just want to get back to hopefully where I was um, before the injury. And there's a look for Scarlet. There's a World Cup. You missed the last one injury. You were part of a very good side in 2011. There's obviously another World Cup as well. Yeah, I'd love to. Like every other, I said, like every other Welsh player wants to get to that World Cup. Um, but for me, it's um, concentration on uh, my training at the moment, making sure that um, I deliver the standards that I set before my injury, and make sure that when I get back on the field, I, you know, get my performances up to scratch and hopefully warrant a recall into the squad. Then, and you know, who knows for, who goes, see how it goes from there because the boys who played. In the centre, you know, we've been done really well this year. And you working with Wayne, he's going on to Wales. Just a, a word on his coaching and how you think he'll do at sort of test level. What do you think he's a step up? Yeah, I think he'd be, you know, very good. Um, good coach. You know, hopefully, he could keep picking me. Um, <laughs> but no, I think I, um, you know, he's been extremely successful since he's been here. He's developed a culture, a winning culture, and um, a mentality amongst us that when we go to places that we should win. Um, I think. Um, that's what you need as a coach at an international level. Um, it's making sure that the boys go into games um, in a good place, um, physically and mentally. And um, I think Wayne has been like the you know look at candidates. He's been stand out really since he's been here. Couple of maybe fixtures. That's right. I'm just um, they're out today. You got Ulster first up. Simon needs to be were there now. I mean, what I'd be like Ulster away first. Yeah, and what Dwayne. Like yeah, well, Simon's there and Dwayne. What would I be like a Scarlet's reunion, isn't that? <laughs> Yeah, I think um, Steve will probably go out and meet Peely and Simon um, before the game. But um, look, you know, they've, they've obviously got fond memories of this place and um, you know, it'll be a test for us and I'm sure they'll want to make sure that they get one up on us as well. You know, it's a difficult place to go. Um, um, but what we need to do now is concentrate on the next five weeks or so to make sure that you know, when the boys come in next week from international, they get up to speed, and you know we keep going um, in a positive direction of where we were at the end of last year. I think um, you look at the way we were training and playing. We have to make sure that we go to that next level because um, there's a team that's setting the standard that we want to be up there with them, and I think that's um, that's the challenge that we need. Final one for me, some fixtures. No Boxing Day games this year, they've restructured a bit. There's only Saturdays either side of Christmas. Yeah. As a player, did you enjoy the Boxing Day or there's a bit more on player welfare now this time around? Look, you loved the Boxing Day um, because you were guaranteed a full house. And, um, you know, it. hopefully the fixture and the excitement itself warrants people to come and watch on a Saturday. You know, that's where it should be like anyway, not because it's on a Boxing Day. Um, and I think player welfare is is important because playing two derbies in the space of five six days is uh, extremely difficult on the body. Um, I haven't done it for a while, but um, you know it is tough. And um, like I said, I'm I'm sure um, I'm sure the front rowers will be able to enjoy themselves a lot more come Christmas Day um, at lunchtime. So um, no, I think I think it's the right move. It is a shame that the Boxing Day does have to go, but like it. Player welfare is the most important thing these days. John, you mentioned sorry, uh, Wayne. Does it change anything here? It hasn't so far. Um, I think it's just making sure that you know, what it puts it the scars in a position that they know they have got a year to find the right man to come in and hopefully carry on and, and improve what the Wayne has built in this uh, period that he's been here. So. Um, I don't think it changed anything. I don't think it'll change how Wayne uh, approaches his coaching. And um, yeah, I think um, yeah, I, I can't see it being an issue, to be honest. And obviously, Scott's 
gone to the Ospreys. Has that been a bit strange seeing someone we've almost grown up playing alongside? Yeah, I think it, it will be. It will be difficult watching him um, in a different shirt. You know, he, he played um, age grade like through with my brother, so I know Scott really well. Um, but uh, that was his decision to make, and um, you know you wish him all the best and success um, apart from when it comes to coming here. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've, um, you've seen your brother do really well while you've been off. What would it mean to you? He's about to go to his first Wales cap. Yeah. What would it mean to you if you played in the, the same Wales side as him? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, honestly, I think if we had that opportunity, it would top anything I've done in rugby. Um, but like we both understand that we have uh, each of us a lot of work to do uh, to get to that point um, but yeah I think um, it, it would be an ex a very proud day for us as a family and um, yeah I, could, I, could, I couldn't think of anything better really. He's done well in the last eight months. Yeah he's well he's he's finally flying the uh, Davis name you know <laughs> um, it's about time really um, but no he has he's done extremely well um, and he's taken his opportunity and yeah, I was over the moon for him um, to get his chance and I thought he gave a great account of himself when he was out in Argentina. Going back to the fixtures, you got Leinster second up after everything that happened last year. Is there a bit of a determination to try and get an early marker? Um, well, okay, it'll all depend on how, um, you know, what, what Leinster we see because traditionally those the Irish boys have a longer pre-season and they come in slightly later. but. I think it's um, important for us our first home game, um, and we've always had a proud record here. And um, you know, we want you know Leinster are set the benchmark. They are you know, the best team in Europe. Um, how they train, how they um, execute their plans. So you know, we are looking up at them at the moment, and we want to reach our level. So um, you know, any team coming to Park Scars, we want to win. But um, you know, I'm sure that will be um, an important fixture for us. You seem to have taken your game to a, a, a new level in the sort of 18 months, two years before the Lions tour. There's obviously the culmination of that. How easy is it to get back uh, to that sort of lion standard, shall we say? I don't know, we'll find out, I think. Um, uh, for me, it was what's helped, I think, with this injury. Normally, when you're coming back for, in an injury during a season, you only have a limited time of getting yourself back up to speed and being able to not rush back for the end of last year, um, have a full pre-season. Um, you know, I think that will help me. Um, but. You know, it all comes down to myself making sure that you know I do everything I was doing beforehand, and little things I've picked up since then. Being injured, you know, I, I get you, you're your own worst critic, your harshest critic, and you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I want to push myself onto the next level. I want to be there where I was beforehand, and you know, it's it's going to be down to my hard work and making sure that I do everything possible for the Scarlets that you know that's required of me and um, you know that's that's probably the challenge I've set myself um, for for the first well the next few months at least. What sort of things do you look at while you're injured? What, how do you do that? Do you look back at, at old games and try and pick stuff up? Or? I think it's just for me it's um, you know, when you when you do your rehab when you're balancing on um, wobble balls and stuff like that, working with tennis balls, you try and use that as um, developing a skill that will help you, yeah, your hand-eye coordination, your catching, um, so it's just being able to use that when you when you think you're doing nothing at all, it's just making sure that you, you can see a purpose to it and um, being able to develop those skills hopefully will work and help and um, you know it is just getting yourself in good physical condition. Um, so when you're on the field, you're feeling that you can repeat, you know, repeat those runs more and more without feeling as tired. So it's there's a combination of physical preparation and then a skill preparation that you have to do, I think. And um, I've enjoyed that. Um, that's the part I've enjoyed being away from the game, being able to get myself ready to go and hopefully set the, you know, the standard where I was. The summer tour, you would have been fit to go, presumably, would you? No. Just what was the what was the thought process behind the summer tour? Simply, it was a talking point. Um, like I got injured on a Saturday, Monday. I was told I wasn't playing again this season, so that was it. They weren't. Okay. Um, so I think they were always thinking of resting 
the boys that went on the Lions tour like they did. Um, so there was never a rush to get me back, um, but which was, I think, was a good thing for me because um, I knew that I had this um, set amount of time to prepare myself. So um, I think um, if I really went for it, like if there was like a World Cup to prepare for and I needed a couple of games, I probably could have. But I'm glad that I couldn't, didn't have to do that and just um, get myself ready for this.